Hi everyone, in this next talk, we're gonna be talking about trigger desynchrony. Let's get started. So there are two different types of trigger desynchrony. There's ineffective triggering and extra triggering. In ineffective triggering, what happens is the patient tries to initiate a breath. However, the ventilator will not deliver a breath despite the patient's effort. Extra triggering is the opposite. Here, a ventilator inappropriately delivers a breath in the absence of patient effort. So let's talk a little bit more about ineffective triggering. Here, the patient tries to initiate a breath. However, the ventilator does not recognize this and as a result, doesn't deliver a breath. Now, what are the causes of ineffective triggering? The differential includes, is the patient's flow or pressure trigger set too high? Remember, you, the operator, will determine what the trigger variable is whether it's flow or pressure. And if the patient's flow or pressure surpasses the threshold that you have set, then a breath will be triggered. However, if this threshold is set too high, then the patient will not get a breath, and as a result, you'll have ineffective triggering. Is there diaphragmatic weakness? You need the diaphragm to contract in order to generate a pressure or a flow. However, if the diaphragm is too weak, you will get ineffective triggering. Is there significant air trapping? Let's do an exercise right now. I want you to inhale 100%, then exhale 50%. Inhale 100%, exhale 50%. And continue to do this. As you can see, it's gonna be more and more difficult to inspire. And if it's more difficult to inspire, it's because you have difficulty in generating a flow or pressure. This is known as air trapping or auto peeping when the lungs have too much volume and you have not exhaled all the volume inside your lung. As a result, if you have air trapping, you'll have ineffective triggering. Here, the ventilator delivers an inappropriate breath, also known as auto triggering. So what's the differential for extra triggering? Here, the trigger threshold may be set too low. So as a result, you can on firing breaths, getting extra triggering or you can have cardiac oscillations. High cardiac output, cardiac oscillations can actually cause extra triggering. If there's any leaks from the circuit or if you have a chest tube in place, these leaks can cause extra triggering. If you have condensation in the tubing, bubbling in the circuit, the swaying of these secretions can actually cause a change in pressure or flow resulting in extra triggering. Even peristalsis can cause extra triggering. Long story short, Extra triggering is due to extra pulmonary causes. All right, tell me the story. Tell me what's going on with this patient. On what do you think is the target and the mode of ventilation? What's going on? Which phase is their desynchrony? Is it trigger desynchrony, target desynchrony, or cycle desynchrony? What's the differential and how do you fix it? Why don't you pause the video now Okay, what's the target variable? The target variable here, looking at the flow with scalar, you can see it's preset, so as a result, flow is your target variable, making the mode of ventilation volume control ventilation. So what's going on? I can see there's issue here, a trigger issue here, trigger issue here, and they keep on firing a lot of breaths. So which phase? This is a trigger desynchrony. There are two trigger desynchronies that we know of, ineffective triggering and extra triggering. So this is extra triggering. What's the differential for extra triggering? The trigger threshold may be set too low. There might be cardiac oscillations, peristalsis. There might be a leaking in the circuit. There might be condensation in the tubing. As a result, it's secondary to extra pulmonary causes. So how do we fix it? We wanna increase the trigger threshold to minimize extra triggering. Now tell me the story. What's going on with this patient? Tell me the target and the mode of ventilation. What's the issue? Which phase is their desynchrony? What's your differential diagnosis? And how do you fix it? Why don't you pause the video now? All right, so what's our target variable and what's our mode? Taking a look at the flow scalar, we can see this is decelerating ramp. So as a result, we can say that the target variable is flow and our mode of ventilation is volume control ventilation. Let's confirm that. I can see that volume control here with our max flow rate of 60 with a decelerating ramp. Next, what's the issue? 
So when reading the waveforms, you want to read each scalar left to right. So take a look at the pressure scalar. You can see a breath is triggered here. Going along here, you can see there is a negative deflection in the pressure scalar. A negative deflection in the pressure scalar means that there is inspiration. However, right here, no breath is being triggered. Uh, so that's an issue. Down here, same issue here, negative deflection, no trigger. Going down the flow scalar, here is your descending ramp. During exhalation, you can see that there is an uptake in the flow and there's inspiration there. So there is definitely an issue right here. So which phase is there dyssynchrony? Is it a trigger dyssynchrony, target dyssynchrony, or cycle dysynchrony? This is a trigger dyssynchrony. Out of the trigger dyssynchronies, is it ineffective triggering or extra triggering? This is ineffective triggering. Over here, you have a negative deflection, but no breath is being triggered. What's your differential to ineffective triggering? The trigger threshold might be set too high. There might be significant air trapping, respiratory muscle weakness, diaphragmatic weakness. But there's an, another interesting point about this case. Again, tell me the story. A lot can be said from looking at the ventilator. We have set a cycle variable of 450 milliliters. That means once the patient receives 450 milliliters, the breath should cycle. However, for some reason, this patient is receiving 761 milliliters. Now, how would a patient be receiving 761 milliliters if their cycle variable is 450? Somehow, they're getting 310 milliliters more. How is that possible? So the way this is possible is if something is being added to the circuit. So here, this patient has a continuous nebulizer attached to the circuit. So that way, they are receiving more volume. Now, you have to understand, when you have a continuous nebulizer attached to a circuit, that actually generates a flow. For example, that will be a flow of 5 liters per minute. In order for the patient to trigger a breath, they need to generate here a flow of 3 liters per minute. Once they hit 3 liters per minute, a breath is triggered. However, in addition to having a continuous nebulizer, they have to generate 3 liters per minute plus the flow generated by the continuous nebulizer, which might be 5 liters per minute, totaling 8 liters per minute. It's extremely difficult for a patient to generate eight liters per minute to trigger a breath. So as a result, the reason why this patient is having ineffective triggering is because they have to surpass an extremely high trigger threshold. So one way to fix this is to decrease the trigger threshold while the patient is on continuous nebulizer, or what they can do is switch the trigger variable to pressure rather than flow. And that will alleviate the problem. So a lot can be told by just looking at the ventilator, looking at the outputs and the numbers, looking at the waveforms and the settings. It's easy to tell what a patient's story is. So that's it for trigger dyssynchrony. Join me in my next video where I talk about target dyssynchrony. Thanks a lot.